Regarding the Prophet wasallam, advising his companions, Sahaba, to ask Uwais al-Qarni, rahimahullah, to make supplication, dua, for them. This, undoubtedly, applied only in his case. And it is known that Uwais, rahimahullah, was not on the same level as Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, Umar, radiallahu anhu, Uthman, radiallahu anhu, Ali, radiallahu anhu, or the other companions, Sahaba. The Prophet wasallam did not tell anyone among his companions, Sahaba, to ask anyone to make supplication, dua, for them. To sum up, we can say that there is no sin in asking someone to make supplication, dua, for you, that you hope will have his supplication, dua, answered, on the condition that this does not involve anything that is wrong. But it is better and more appropriate not to do this. 4. Intermediation Tawassul By one's condition of distress Narrated Abu Dawood Rahimahullah and Tirmidhi Rahimahullah that this is a lawful means of intermediation At-Tawassul al mashrua for you to think about your situation as you were poor compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Prophet Ayyub, Job, alayhi salam, and Ayyub, when he cried to his Lord, saying, Harm has afflicted me, and thou art the most merciful of the merciful. So, Prophet Ayyub, Job, alayhi salam, got close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his situation and was touched with a serious affliction. It was apparent to the people because his color changed and his appearance was repugnant from the seriousness of the illness. Therefore, with that, he called his Lord, Harm has afflicted me, and thou art the most merciful of the merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said regarding Prophet Musa, Moses alayhi salam. So, he watered their flocks for them. Then he turned back to shade and said, O my Lord, truly, I need whatever good that you bestow on me. Chapter 6 The Intercession A Shafa Intercession, Shafa refers to mediating for someone else to gain some benefit or ward off some harm. Since the grave worshippers who go to graves and supplicate make dua to them and call out to them, do not believe that the deceased are the creators or the givers of provision or that they control the universe alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then in their view, it is not polytheism, shirk, to call upon them. Instead, they believe that those they are worshipping in the graves are only a means of nearness, merely an intermediary, wasila, a means to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since they are only intermediaries, wasila, that means they affirm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they are asked, who the Creator is, they would say, it is Allah. So they call upon the inhabitants of the graves because the dead intercede for them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mediate. And they call this intercession shafa'a with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is their claim until this day. This claim of theirs is in reality the same as that of the idolaters. When the Prophet ﷺ used to say to them, Do not worship the idols. Do not call upon them. Instead, call upon Allah alone, your Lord and Creator. Their response used to be, We only worship them that they may bring us nearer to Allah in rank. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Unquestionably, for Allah is a pure religion 
And those who take protectors besides him say, We only worship them, that they may bring us near to Allah in rank. When the Prophet ﷺ used to invite the pagans to call upon Allah, do not call upon the idols. Then it was not that they did not believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the creator and the sustainer, the giver of life and death, the one who sends rain down from the sky and who brings out the provisions of the earth. They affirmed all of that, but they called upon the idols claiming, we do not worship them except that they bring us closer to Allah in rank. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, and they worship besides Allah things that hurt them not, nor profit them. And they say, These are our intercessors with Allah. Say, Do you inform Allah of that which He knows not in the heavens and on the earth? Glorified and exalted be He above all that which they associate as partners with Him. They worship the creation instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or called upon the dead, the jinn, or the idols alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those things they worship could not harm them, nor could they bring them benefit. And yet they claimed, we are only calling upon them, because they are intercessors between us and Allah, so they will bring us closer to Allah. This is exactly what the Christians do with their saints. They did not want to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. So they called upon idols, or the inhabitants of the graves, or saints, or prophets, or messengers, or they would call upon the jinn, or the angels. And they used to say, just as the Sufi grave worshippers say today, they are intercessors between us and Allah. This is something that is a reality and is present in our times. The heads of Sufism in theological rhetoric, the Ash'aris and and Maturidis say, supplication to the deceased in their graves, seeking rescue with them and seeking from them to intercede is not polytheism, shirk. They claim that this intermediation, tawassul, that is, this is nothing but seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is only seeking intercession Shafa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are, that is, they are calling upon someone who will call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. They take the saints as intermediaries between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden them from calling upon those who can neither benefit nor harm them. So, they assert this is not polytheism, shirk, because they believe that the ones they are calling upon in their graves do not create or provide, and they do not control the universe. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that. Monotheism, to them, is merely the affirmation of the oneness of lordship. They hold what they do at the graves is not be polytheism, shirk unless one believes that the dead have the ability to create, to provide sustenance, and to control the universe alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something they mention clearly in their writings and lectures. Some of them may see that the Qur'an forbids their grave worship, so they may go as far as to say, seeking from the dead is incorrect, but they will not say, it is major polytheism, shirk al-akbar. Because of their belief that polytheism, shirk, is to deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. So, they do not forbid their followers from traveling to graves and performing rituals and celebrations at the shrines of these saints. They assert this is merely taking intermediaries and intercessors in a desire to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have not ascribed anything to them that they themselves have not affirmed, and we are not putting words into their mouths. This futile belief is present in their books and in their speeches where they refute the people 
of monotheism, Tawheed, and they defend the people of polytheism, Shirk, and grave worshipping. They defend the acts done at the graves, circumambulation, Tawaf, prostration, Sajda, bowing, raising hands in supplication, Dua, and calling out the name of the deceased in the grave, seeking his aid and intercession. And when it is said to them, What are you doing? This is major polytheism. They say, No, it is not polytheism, shirk, because we did not say that the man in his grave created us. We know Allah created us. So, how can it be polytheism? Shirk. So, polytheism, to them, is only a violation of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be approached through the intercession, shafa'ah, of the dead, the jinn, the prophets, the companions, sahaba, the saints, special animals, and so on.